Funniest shit would be when we got here for the first time and we got all butt ass naked in the same room and ran through the shower with it like 90 miles an hour. I went to bed laughing my ass off. I was like, damn. 50 dicks, man. 50 dicks. Sports car just to prove I'm a real big baller because I made a million dollars, but I spent the long bills and shit. Shit's <laughs> sick. Yo. What's what type of drama to? I'll go to Google and go to one, two, three movies. One, two, three. He's, he says one, two, three movies. Same thing I told you. Sound man ain't got sound. It ain't got sound, man. There's a spot. Tell him to bring his phone. Bring your phone. I don't know. Hold in. I'm listening to it right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the spot you gotta click on the screen. I'm listening to it. There's something you gotta click on the screen. You want to do it then? Fuck. All right, fuck it. You can do it like that. I'm just trying to stay. Mine's really small. This is stupid. I don't like this. It's gonna look like. Can we cut on this side? Yeah. Look, this is all the shit they need. Any great leader will tell you that being physically fit is the hallmark of being a great soldier and a great infantryman. And you all are well on your way. Your company had the highest rifle marksmanship average of any in the last six cycles. Your company average was expert with an average of 36.38 hits out of 40 shots. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a lethal group of soldiers out there. So let's start out. What is your name? Oh shit. <laughs> Chris Short. My name is uh, Blake Gillum and they call me Kanapolis. And why do they call you Kannapolis? Because that's all I fucking talk about. Where are you from? Kannapolis. And what is your favorite place to be in? Kannapolis. My family lives there. Got friends. Um, it's small. It's cozy. It's kind of like a... It's kind of like a... Uh, it's, like, it's like a little world inside of a big world. And it's Kannapolis. My name is Zach. They call me Arkansas. My name's Jose Diaz from Chicago, Illinois, aka Maverick over here. How you doing, High Speed? Uh, well, I am a uh, private gun, and uh, that's what they call me, gun or flex, one or two. So, what do they call me? Well, they call me three different things. Graham, I like known. They call me Teddy Graham, and the one that I like the least, they call me Graham Cracker. <laughs> Which I do not like at all, I'm a little, little racy. <laughs> They either call me Paws, Captain Paws, um, that's usually about it. Um, I'm from Greenville, Michigan. Yeah, there's nothing cool about that place. Call me Killer. You wanna know why? Why? Because I go around killing niggas. No, I'm playing. Um, they just call me Kraft. It's Kraft macaroni and cheese. That's all I go by. That's all I will go by. Dick. And macaroni, macaroni and dick. Macaroni and dick. <laughs> dick Master Flex. <laughs> No, they just call me Kenzie. <laughs> I don't really got a nickname. <laughs> you don't get nicknames here. No, you don't really get nicknames unless you're like some big ass motherfucker like Tank. Uh, I'm Private Hall, and uh, my nickname is uh, Zombie. Because I sleep all the time, and I'm always caught sleeping. Uh, I sleep in formation, uh, I sleep on my fire guard shifts. Uh, I've been known to be uh, passing out on my fire guard shifts, too. Um, actually, uh, Private Halpern was there with me that one day. You caught me passing out, that was, that was cool. Uh, I doze off a lot. 
And he is that. legit a piece of shit. And you suck that dick! And you suck that dick. I will tell you straight up, I'm the nicest guy Wait around here. formation. Wait formation. I'm the nicest guy around Wait here. Wait formation. Am I the nicest guy around here? No. I'm the nicest guy around here. Alright, so let's assume the rage of James here for a minute. Ask him about his nose. Alright, so, so let's get this, this, uh, this old boy coming up. First of all, sitting like a douche, wearing a beret, inside, with an M4, in your hand, sitting crosswords in your chair, like you're ready for this interview. So, camera roll. Douche. How do you describe yourself before coming to the room? I don't know. Probably exactly the same as I am now. Undisciplined, quite the drinker. Um, more worried about the next party I was going to be at. Uh, I don't know. I guess you can. I'd describe myself as a rebel. I wouldn't say necessarily. Well, yeah, a street cat. Like the person I was just in the streets doing street things. Uh, getting into trouble versus staying out of trouble. That's kind of churlish. Kind of churlish. Define? Churlish. What is that? Churlish. You don't know what churlish is? No. Childish. Churlish. I smoked a lot of pot. That's what I did before the army. And then I joined the army and I got in really good shape or a lot better shape and you know, it was pretty nice. I was always like this. Like my friends even say like when I came back like you haven't changed a bit. Like yeah, exactly the same. Like yeah, pretty much. Like the, everything over here, everything that I do here is the same thing I do over there. Before I came to the army, uh, I'll be honest with you, I was a dick. Um, I didn't really care about uh, anybody or anything. I was all about what's good for me, you know. Um, kind of like this: take everything, give nothing back. That kind of shit. You know what I mean? No. Um. I was a long boarder. I worked on ships. Um, kind of like a skater kid, fucking douchebag. You know, I, I didn't do no drugs or anything like that. I mean, I may have smoked a cigarette or two, but then I joined the army and I became a um, a team player. Yep, team player. Um, I'm more disciplined now. I know how to make a bed. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I worked at McDonald's for two and a half years, which sucked. Uh, never work at McDonald's. Um, I worked at a train company making eleven fifty an hour. I have no idea why the fuck I quit. And then I was homeless for about two weeks before I got here. So I planned on joining the military and I decided not to. And then my dad, after 19 years of not being there, got out of prison and my mom allowed him to move in. After he moved in, me and I got some discrepancies, a couple of altercations between each other, and I ended up getting kicked out after I you know, whooped his ass. Well, I was homeless for about three, four weeks, and then I moved in with Ricky Metalmess. Ricky Metalmess gave me my job at the train station. Um, putting fucking machine rock and everything on there. Ricky really fucking helped me out. Ricky helped me out a shitload. And then um, I was going to the military again. This is over time spent about a year, two years. And then my grandfather got um, very sick and he had to get a leg amputated. So he had no legs because he had already missed one. So I moved in with him for about three months to help take care of him. And that means like literally everything. I had to carry him from the toilet to the bed and everything. So after that, after he got better, he got his license and everything to where he could you know, do everything himself. I um, moved out of there into my mom's house, and my dad was still there for a little while, and then I got kicked out again. So I was homeless for about two months, two weeks, or oh, not two months, two weeks. And then um, I came here. Why exactly did you join the room? Uh, well, probably because I got lost on my way to college, but I always felt, you know, you needed some way to serve. My brother went to my He's Air Force. So I signed up. 
Unless my dad was in the Navy. And... Might as well. Well, originally I went to college, went to Central Michigan University. I uh, was studying sports management, so I become an athletic director. Um, I then proceeded to leave school for just a bunch of different reasons. And then I got a gym at my local, a job at my local gym. It's called Fresh Start Fitness. And they hired me to do sales, to like, you know, sign people up, stuff like that. Um, from that, progressed to me, like, selling supplements for, like, other gyms. And then we helped open up another gym, like, expanded to a different location. And it uh, ended up working there. And then after a while, I was like, you know, I always wanted to join the military. So I decided to just do that, get that out of the way, and now I'm here. My senior year of high school, I was thinking of my plans for after school. Uh, originally planned on my parents and family told me to go like do the Air Force or the Coast Guard or something stupid like that. And I was gonna do it, but my dad talked me out of it. He's like, hey, you should probably go to college. And you know, after my dad telling me, hey, go to college, go to college, I'll help pay if you go to college. I'm like, hi, I'll go to college. So I decided to go to college. Um, but there's always that thing like all my buddies were in some or in some sort of the military. There's a couple of my buddies in the Navy. And it's like one of those things that eventually you're like, I guess it's my turn. And it's like, I don't know, it's just something that felt right. A few reasons. I like to travel. I heard you can travel with. Uh, then I found out like what, what the army like legit does. Say, mostly it uh posted. Build your character, and build your personality, make you become a better type of person. So I was game for it. You know, when you grow up old, you, well not old, but when you get a certain age, you decide you want to change ways. What's up? Turtles! What have you learned here? It fucking sucked, cock. Everyone's a dickhead here. And why, why do you say that? I mean, like, aren't these your battle buddies? Uh, they can suck my dick. <laughs> Coffin, what is one of the first things you said to the drill sergeants when we first got here? They asked you, Coffin, why are you here? Why do you want to be here? And you said what? I want to blow shit up, drill sergeant. Do you miss anything about the civilian world? Everything. Like what? Like smoking weed. <laughs> Why do you want to document hip hop art? All Smoking the weed. <laughs> Food and video games. All the freedom. That you you could just do whatever you wanted, whenever you really wanted, wanted to. It was really nice. Sex. Now that you're around, you don't really get much in anything, but you know, getting smoked a lot. <laughs> I have kids in my life. Uh, my freedom. No, I'm kidding. I don't really care. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, I guess I, I could say I miss playing video games a lot whenever I wanted to. Uh, just chilling, smoking a cigarette or two, or whatever the fuck, put a dip in. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Basically, I miss music. I miss social world, social media, like Facebook, Snapchat. I like, I love my music. Like music is, music is me. Like this is, like here you don't have music to tone out certain shit, so you gotta deal with. It. Like in the civilian world, when I was able to just pop these bitches in, play my music, and be done with it. <laughs> So, oh, oh and, and regular food. <laughs> Love seasoned food, don't like the fact that they don't season their food here. Like, like it has, I'm not gonna say it has no taste, but it has like the taste it's supposed to have. Like, it's, like if it's a steak, it tastes like a steak. But what I take it back, it has a texture. But it's not seasoned to where it's like, oh, it's that, oh, a die for flavor type shit. So I would describe it more like it's, it's plain, like bland. Not plain, but bland. Like, yeah. How much food are we getting, generally? To include pizza jam or none? No. Do you take food? Maybe 1,200 calorie meals three times a day? Not enough? No, we're near enough. Have you seen the charts that tell you the calories? On the food charts outside the doors? The main course is like 400 calories, the rest of them are like 9,300 calories. You might be getting 1,000 to 1,500 calories a meal. It's that. Eats Houston and Hall devised this meaningful plan to make sure the rest of us don't starve because deep fat food is not good and it's not plentiful. 
and stole about four bottles of them already. But so they got caught and we all gained punishment from it. For what, two hours to get smoked? And then weeks of everybody up on fire guard. And it's just Whoa. now that we're in gold phase and we're leaving off with the pressure from their misfortune of getting caught. And so why, why the fuck do you think they even did that? Like, to break it was hot bread. <laughs> During red phase, you didn't eat much food. And I was, I was a thicker guy back then. I was 169 pounds when we got here, now 148. Um, so it, things have changed, but the, just the lack of food that we got during Red Face really started to fuck with me. Because you know, you're, you're used to eating a lot, and you come here and they give me like this much meat. I'm sorry, I need more than that for my body to even function. And it's just eating UPU all the time, getting yelled at while you're eating. That was what really fucked with me. And you just know how food with this? And just being knowing that my family was at home and like they kind of needed me to be there. And I wasn't. I left at a kind of a time where it kind of was shitty. So I just had to I had to try to like make it seem like everything was okay. So I I did I did what I could. You know, I wrote letters. I uh, I kept telling myself that everything was gonna be okay. End up everything stayed okay. Um you know, I prayed a lot, went to church more than I ever have. Like, I came here and I finally kind of like found my religion all over again. So it was kind of a, a good thing that I came here when I did, because all those things kind of turned out being a good, a good win. Bittersweet misery. It's good shit. It's good shit. The good times turn to the bad times, and the bad times turn to the good times. I mean, what was the most challenging thing to do? Um, just a couple of things. Being away from home, dealing with a bunch of. Hey, yo! Uh, holy fuck! Dealing with a bunch of guys like that. The constant stress and the constant just drive and grind. You know, you just get real tired after. We've been here 16 weeks. It's just kind of tiring. It would have to do with the weather. Like, I cannot do it in cold. And when it gets like 30 degrees and below, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. That'd be the most challenging part. Because I want to do it is walk away and go somewhere warm, but I can't do that in formation. <laughs> Dude, it's fucking. It's a. It's a cold. It's a coexisting thing. Like, for one, it's, it's 50 fellas in an enclosed area with different personalities. You know, from different areas. Like, like, wow, it's not, they're not from the area I'm from. Two is, is everybody trying to be that one guy. Like, everybody wants to be that one guy that everybody listens to and shit like that. And then you got the drill sergeants. They see the drill sergeants talking to us a certain way. So then they feel like they can talk to each other, each other a certain way. So it causes more problems for people like, hey, you can't talk to me like that. It causes tension. And that, and people just doing unnecessary things and do certain shit, not knowing the people that they're around and not knowing what reacts to, or well, how the person will react to what they do, and they do it anyway. So, yeah, that's probably why. For me, at least, I can't speak for everybody else. Before or after cell phones? Before cell phones. No, that's just crazy. I didn't know there was no winning. You know, there's no, there is no avoiding it. I sat in my fucking corner and tried to talk to only certain people. Didn't help. Somehow, I could hear you. Jones's fucking voice across the goddamn bay 
you say something to piss me off. And I already had Harbuck here still, and that motherfucker slept right next to me. So there's no avoiding it. He fucking put his shit in the middle of the way. So what I do? I fucking start yelling at him about something. God knows what. I'll just throw shit in the middle of the bay. Who knows? There's your mental state gets really fucking tested here. I did not do well at times. Sometimes, you know, you just had to yell at people, which I did a lot. I enjoyed my yelling. I would, I would have you. They have a fucking blast being a drill sergeant. If I don't go the officer route, that is my hopes and prayers that I become a fucking drill sergeant. The biggest challenge for me was um, being away from home and coming to a place where you don't know anybody and having to mold with a bunch of strangers, 47, 42, something like that, strangers to kind of meet in the middle. That was the hardest thing for me. Different backgrounds, different people. And like I said, there's times where I hated everyone, there's times where I loved everyone, you know what I'm saying? It's rough because you got people from different walks of life and uh, everybody's different, you know? So it's kind of, you get your clicks and you guys want to rip each other's heads off, you know? Pretty much the whole 14 weeks you're here, you know that. I was challenging his name. Believe it or not, even with all the drama, not seeing my family. That was probably the worst thing. It's just the mindset of being away. Um, I have personal shit going on. My mom losing her mom and things like that. Or, you know, you just want to be there for your families. Just being gone, being away from home. What, what defines home for you? Being embraced by love, surrounded by the people that you know you should be around. Home is where the heart is. That's really how there is to it. Home is where the heart is. That's probably the best answer you'll ever get. Uh, the, the hardest day individually would probably be the first day pickup, and then the hardest group of days was probably the last training at FTX. And why was it hard? Because we were up, and I felt like I hadn't slept in years. The 12 mile ruck march was a big one. Because um, actually, yeah, you were actually staying next to me once we got done. Because you were actually behind me the whole time. And I'd like let you know, I'm like, dude, we're almost there. I can see you. we're at the end. And once we actually got done, you just take that ruck tag off and you threw it on the ground. And you just knew that you were fucking done. You never had to do it again while we were here. And it was just that moment. You're like, this is done. I fucking did it. I didn't mess up. I fucking finished. And I just, it was one of those things that you're like, I can't believe I actually fucking did it. I like, that was the one thing I was actually worried about. Probably, that was actually one of the best moments. Not days, it was the worst day. One of the worst day, best moment. Because you just, you finally got it done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. I think it was the second or third day of FTX. It's uh, rained all night, we slept in the mud. I slept in wet bottoms, wet top, um, with wet fucking wet weather bottoms, wet weather top. Um, our hoosh was fucking just shit. I was soaked still. Um, the rain was coming in from the side. My helmet was muddy and soaked on the inside. My assault pack was soaked. My flick was soaked. Um, the radio was soaked. Uh, everything was just drenched still. Um, and then it was it just starting to calm down when we woke up. And then we had to go to breakfast. And then we walk up to the, the like, talk. And believe it or not, it starts raining even harder. My worst day, I legit probably think, what's the day we had in fucking eating the rain? Like, open tray, rain on our food, in the rain, cold, muddy hand. That was probably the worst day of my life because I think it was just, for me, it was unsanitary. It was, it was unnecessary. At this point, I already told people, I was like, I'll fucking quit right now if we have to stand outside and eat in the rain. But what does it do? It rains even harder, and I'm sitting there, just standing in line, waiting to get my, I had to go into a tent to get my food, because why would the food be out in the rain? I don't fucking know. When we just go inside, grab my food, walk outside to the fucking rain, just getting all over my food as I'm just staring at it. I watch a puddle start to grow in my fucking eggs. My grits, got a nice watery texture to it. I just go over, stand, can't, can't sit down to eat today. You have to stand as it's downpouring rain on you with your, your silverware which you're lucky to have, thank God, we had some more that day. And you're eating your eggs, and it's like, as you're scooping it in, more water is coming into your mouth, 
it's like all you're tasting is just water and eggs. And at this point, your hands are still muddy because how are you gonna wash your hands? So if you wanna grab your bread, oh wait, your bread's soaked. Doesn't fucking matter if you want your bread. You're not gonna eat it anyways because it's wet. Nothing you could really eat was good. Everything was just shit. And they were like, oh yeah, we're gonna go train now. At this point, you're like, oh, yeah, okay, perfect. Fuck me, I don't need sleep. I don't need sleep, heat, dry clothes, anything. Still wearing the same underwear from the first fucking day. Like, it was just nonstop us getting fucked. Over and over and over and over again. Well, I still didn't even get clean from the shower. Because, you know, of course, everyone wanted to rush us to take a shower. So I quick got in, tried to get all the dirt out of my hair, knowing that I wasn't going to get it all out. Because it, it wasn't possible. There was too much dirt ingrained in my hair, my ears, the back of my ears, my balls, everything. It was just fucking dirty. So I had to take a shower and then I waited for everyone to be done and I went back and took another shower. And then it's okay because I had fire guard that night too. So I had to wake up in the middle of the night. So it was, it, it was a constant fucking for a week. It was a real, it was a shit show. Worst fucking day. Oh my God. Worst day had to be day on hand now when it was colder than a son of a bitch out there. I legit could not move my hand past here. I was eating oatmeal with a fucking fork. And the oatmeal had ice chunks in that bitch. And I had oatmeal all down my face. That was a worst fucking day. Yes, um, <laughs> so FTX. That's not even a lie. That's actually, I think, my worst fucking day. FTX. FTX. Eating actually. in the rain. Getting no. smoked, worst thing and ever. shrimping, and eeling in the sand. Worst, worst thing ever is when we uh, had to do, like, you know what shrimping is? Yeah, shrimp. We had to do a bunch of shrimping, low crawls and high crawls, like, probably like 600 meters through shit. <laughs> a bunch of sand, it was awful. Sand all in my mouth, getting smoked, getting yelled at the entire time. It was great, great time. <laughs> Crawling 100 yards with my face in the dirt. It's like... <laughs> Fuck it, I'm here, man. Let's get my face in the dirt. Let's go. We did not relieve our weapons guard, our ammo point, all night. We tried. We told people to. They just never did it. So what ended up happening is Sandra Sarno decided to try something out. So we did like a three to five second rush. Then we like low crawled and high crawled. But apparently that wasn't enough for him. So he had us do the shrimp for about 200 yards. I don't know if you've ever shrimp before, but that shit is miserable. That was the worst moment that actually fucked with your mental state because you're like, that wasn't even my fault. How is it? No one told me to go do it. We told people to go do it. Fuck. Mass punishment is a requisition of one person's fuck up. That happens to occur to every person in the bay. 45 of us. And it's the same person over and over and over again. <laughs> Every time. Fuck fuck games. They love to play fuck fuck games. That is our favorite thing to do. Mass punishment. I mean, it's cool for the first three weeks because it's the red phase or whatever. But like, once we get to like white, blue phase, like I feel like that shit should come to an end because then people will start getting us stuffed up on purpose and doing shit that they don't want to do on purpose, knowing that it'll be a mass punishment. So then, for example, motherfucker don't make the bed, all our bays get flipped. All because of this one person. Say just making this one person flip his bed and make him do push-ups and sit-ups and shit like that. I think it's very stupid. Like, so it hasn't, it hasn't made us a team at all? No. Hell no. Because what happens is when my fucker gets a smoke, we all hate that one person. If that's what you want to call a team, then yeah. Yeah, because that's one thing we do agree on. When one person gets a smoke, we decide to hate that one person. But other than that, no, because then after that's over with, we get smoked, there's gonna be another motherfucker that do something stupid, and then we're all gonna go to hate him. That's how it works. Yeah. Mass punishment is the worst thing that has ever happened to this platoon. Uh, you know, you can't win, especially when people fuck up and it's like it's a single person constantly fucking up and it gets the whole platoon fucked up. That drugs instantly drops morale because, you know, it's not my fault. They, this dumbass does this. Or this dumbass does that. This is a constant little fuck us. Um, like if, if like Harger got his locker tossed and we all fucking have to do push-ups for it. That's not my fucking fault. He's a dumbass. Or if someone decides to go into the drill sergeant's fucking office to grab their fucking gas mask, 
we all get fucked up for about an hour because of it. You know, it's not, not my fault. shorts on, wearing your PT pants, your waffle top on, on your left foot you're going to wear your flip flop with white socks, and your fucking beanie, on your top you're going to wear your green shirt, your fucking PT jacket, your beanie, and an OCP top on, and you have about three minutes, go, and you fucking run into the bay, and you throw your locker up, and you try to remember what he's saying, and you, you're going to be wrong, or you're not going to get the time back, um, and he proceeds to keep doing it, giving you less time. I mean, at this point, you're just sweating because you're running through the bank. You're trying to throw these clothes on, rip this off, take this off. That was the ultimate like mind mind game that they played. This place is sucks, but not that sucks. You know, what I mean? <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Yeah. At that moment, it was really bad when we got the raining it, in the foxhole, in, in the tornado. That was tough, but right now, we can we can talk about that shitty happens like with the smiling or we survive in tornado like this. We some bad motherfuckers here. <laughs> the fucking tornado. Tornado. <laughs> the tornado had. had uh, STT was the, probably the craziest thing for me because I ain't never really. I'm from the Midwest and we don't really have fucking tornadoes up there like that. Like we hear on the news, hey, a tornado is hit here, but it's never around me. I don't get the draft of it. I don't feel it. That there is crazy for me because I'm in front of me. <laughs> All right, me, me, Hollowfield and Houston dug a hole, our, our hasty fighting position, together. So we dug this hole, and all of a sudden the rain started coming in. And it got really so, windy. We were digging and shit, digging our little foxholes and making our hooches, and the wind picked up. So it started, it started raining like heavy, and it just started getting real windy. And then my hooch was like flapping like crazy because I put, I put some logs over my hooch so my shit wouldn't get blown up. And I, I was just curious. I'm like, what the? Why the fuck is this wind blowing like this? So I stuck my head out the hooch, and lo and behold, the potato is like. 50 meters in front of me and tearing trees up. And the rain started coming in and all of a sudden it just picked up. Right? I mean, rain like, bam. The wind, bam, it just started hitting us. And uh, all of a sudden we had this huge gust of wind come through and we were like, what the hell? What's happening? And um, it picked up the front of our hooch and it flipped it, but we were able to pull it down and save it. And uh, all of a sudden we just saw the, the uh, the cyclone come through like up above the trees and we were like holy crap and saw trees freaking bending in half and it was crazy and uh Gudino and Gordon got hit by a tree that fell right next to him which was actually pretty scary. That's a what the fuck moment when we're all like cool they're gonna call the buses here to get us out of here we're safe they're gonna call the buses and next thing you know those fucking trees are coming down touching the ground halls almost gets lifted off the fucking ground and a tree falls on Gudino. That's the what the fuck moment where you're just like, at that point we were already at the moment where it's like, you can't, you can't escape it. You just gotta fucking laugh. <laughs> fucking Godino died by being hit by a tree. We just gonna laugh at it, you know. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know if we were supposed to get up, go get a drill sergeant, or get up and get up there and to like the talk, the safe zone. They didn't get hurt per se, but it was a shock for them because our fucking tree fell on them. <laughs> so. I mean, that was probably the crazy. And then what made it crazy was the fact that the captain came out and was like, 
Uh, I heard a tornado touchdown. We're like, yeah, got to work. Yes, sir. We, you know what I'm saying? Tornado came in. And, this one, and he was like, oh, almost. It didn't kill you, but it almost did. He was like, continue on. That's really, yeah. really good story. You got it? I told my brother. He was like, oh shit, you're a badass now. I was like, mm -hmm. best believe, bitch. Have you ever seen the tornado in the middle? That I'll close. be honest, I couldn't see it. I, I just grabbed the pancho with Kaufman, like, what the fuck happened? Everybody still like, wow, wow, wow. <sighs> I just this is it. didn't want to get wet. So I just holding pancho like this. No, what no. the fuck? What? <laughs> it was so fucking shit. <laughs> That's terrible. Actually, Kaufman saved me that day. Kaufman saved you that day? Yeah, Kaufman, he's safe. He's savior. Mm. Most of the days, nah. But that day, he was. He's, he's my better buddy. He's my bunkmate. He just uh, took a lot of drugs. <laughs> That's why. Drill sergeant. Fuck it, you. Blow shit up. <laughs> What has been the craziest fucking thing that's happened here so far? Getting my ass beat by Gordon. <laughs> what what started that fight? His fucking face. Funniest thing. Hold on, we can say anything, right? Anything. When Gordon finally grew a pair of balls and punched Coffin square in the fucking nose. <laughs> I'm talking about that man like Coffin like. You even hit me, pussy. Everyone's like, hit him, Gordon, hit him, Gordon. I'm like, come on, man, trying to talk it up. I'm like, fuck you, he won't defend himself. Look around, cough, and put his face up like that. Gordon, bam. <laughs> there was so much fucking blood. <laughs> what has been the best part of basic training for you? Pugil sticks. Why? You got, your got to me. <laughs> 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 I didn't even get my ass beat. You didn't? No, I didn't by who? Exactly. I beat Kenzie's ass out there. Man, the coolest thing about this platoon is that we love each other and hate each other at the same time. So for the first fucking three, four weeks, we were always fighting. But whenever it came down to any competition, any task, we just fucking mold it. You know, we have the most fucking wins. I remember the, the best one was the rope course. The obstacle course with the ropes. I remember, like, the day, the night before, or the day before, we were all fucking fighting over some shit. And we just, nobody was talking, and there was fist fights breaking out, but then that day, the obstacle came out. When we went to the obstacle, everybody just fucking came together, and we fucking took that shit. From climbing ropes and shit, repelling, it was fucking dope. Get some good shit. I say the only thing we became close on is like when we came to challenges like uh, obstacle courses and shit that we had to put our brain in, our brain with. But as far as individually in the Bay living, absolutely not. We we didn't learn anything. We still get on each other's nerves. People still do whatever they want to do. Even the people when we developed the ranking structure, we became got the PGs, got the squad leaders. And nobody list, ever listened to nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was just like a waste of time. To me. What was the best part of basic training? Um, yesterday, we got our phones for good. <laughs> that was the best part. The best part? Honesty? HBL. What is HBL? Holiday block leave. <laughs> Two weeks of heaven. And what did you do on HBL? Spent time with Amber and Cooper and Jackson. Got my truck stuck. Got drunk. Did a little cocaine. And fun. Best fucking day? The hockey game. The hockey game. They were whooping their shit at each other first three minutes into the bitch. I would say the hockey game because I got to talk to a lot of fine ass females. <laughs> oh uh, shit. Did you? Yeah. Really? Honestly. Yeah. You didn't bring me? No. What the fuck? Oh, dude, they were super fucking nice. So, like, I had no idea what the fuck was going on. Like, I legit did not know why they were being so nice. I was like, I'm like, oh my God. I didn't even think that we were going to the hockey game until they were like, get on the fucking bus, we're going to the hockey game. I'm like, holy shit. 
So we get fucking hot to game, and they're like, okay, go out and buy whatever the fuck you want. I'm like, oh my god, I can buy whatever the fuck I want. Honestly, probably the best time here is uh, Urban Ops. I love doing that stuff. Like, I just think that stuff's really cool. Scratch that. Scratch that. The best day here was when we got our cross rifles. That was the best day. Why? Because girls are punching my chest, right? <laughs> This is funny. So um, I go off, and then everybody else is pulling theirs out and everything. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I'll pull mine out. And I pulled it out, out of my chest. And then like, it's still inside cloth and everything. I'm like, hold up. I'm like, how do you put this bitch on? So I pull it out a little bit more, and it falls out completely into my hand. Sitting there, and the thing I know, I look up. The senior girl's arm is licking me in my face. He goes, private. Graham, he goes, why are your cross rifles in your hand? I said, well, drills aren't in hell out. He goes, well, they did. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, that's what went in my head. I'm like, oh, shit. And then he goes, don't worry, Graham. He goes, I'll fix that for you. He picked it up and put it on my chest. And I'm like, boom, again. I damn near fell over. <laughs> the best thing about basic combat training, in my uh, opinion, or my perspective, is there would probably be shooting, because I, I like I like to shoot. I'm not the best at it. I am an expert, but it, I like to do it. Um, another thing I really liked about base combat training was uh, um, that that part where you had to push yourself. See how far you can really go. You go to that point to where you're like, fuck this shit, I can't do it. And then somehow you just, you just keep doing it. The best day that I've had here. The best day I've had here was probably on RM shooting a 39 out of 40. Um, that was just one of those moments where you know that you're gonna have that RM day. And so you're sitting there, you're mentally prepping. You listen to Captain he gave us a little talk that day. He's like, all right, this is something you might wanna do. You might wanna slow your breathing down. This is what I do. I'm like, fuck it, I'll try it. Is it gonna hurt me? Probably not. So I you know, take some huge deep breaths as soon as I get up there, get my ammo, all the way until I'm up on, actually on the range. I'm laying down, I can just feel my heart rate super slow. Everything is just, I'm focused on that. I'm singing songs in my head, so I'm just, I'm completely chill. And next thing you know, all the targets fall besides that one fucking target. And it's just one of those things that was just stupid as fuck. And I just hated it, because it's just like, I missed that one target. I can tell you, I can like picture exactly where the target is, and it just did not fall. It's like all that practice that we did in the bay, all the shit that they, them, like, they taught us over and over, reiterating the stupid yeah, yeah. shit, and it all just finally paid off, being done. It's just one of those things that you just, it's like a huge lease off your shoulders. You just, it's done. I could have done better, but I didn't. I'm Mark so I was out there and then shot weapons. <laughs> yeah, the 40 40 came easy. Um, I sometimes knew I was going to end up getting. Plus, I bet Sergeant and I had to beat Sergeant He's a wise. He's a ranger. Yeah, yeah, he's a ranger. Not, you know, just to add a little footnote there, but yeah. And you beat him. Twice. I came in here not knowing how to shoot a rifle, and now I know how to shoot a rifle. Now I know how to disassemble. Uh, I learned different squad uh, tactics. I joined, you know, uh, straight out of high school. You know, I didn't go to college or anything. It's kind of something I always wanted to do. So I. You know, figured, you know, maybe this is the start of my life. I could use this and, and uh, uh, use what I learned and the knowledge from the military to apply it in the outside world. If I were to join another career, I can use some of the skills that I have. <laughs> what do you do for fun around here? Beat my meat. Usually talk to. Some homies would smack each other with flip flops, tail whip them with towels, we'd shower together, we'd sing songs that we forgot words to. Yeah, run around naked. That'd be it. <laughs> Write letters to girls that don't care about you anymore. Pretty much beat the shit out of each other if you think about it. Like, to be honest, like, people like listening to music. Um, I see people fight a lot and they're bored. Um, they play hide and seek. I've seen people play hide and seek here. And what do we call that game? 
Um, well, they got hide and seek, and then they got <laughs> school shooter. Fuck, you grab the two, four, and nine, and then chasing people around in the bay. Then they have the zombie game. Um, yeah, then they beat the fuck out of each other with sandals. That was pretty interesting. What's the thing where they all grab each other and slap them on the belly? What do they call that? Oh, fuck, I don't yeah, know. Fucking uh, red it's belly or some shit. Dude, they got them every You don't know what the They got them. They got them. They got them. Uh, we like to stretch people out a lot. <laughs> Slapping them in the stomach Slapping and shit. <laughs> give, them good, give them good old shaving cream to the face sometimes cranks. every now and then. <laughs> I don't know, you know, just the, the good hazing. <laughs> yeah, the good old hazing. <laughs> but we all laugh about it, so it's okay. <laughs> Except for the people that get, get you know. So. A little antsy. <laughs> like this motherfucker right here. <laughs> what the fuck? Look at that. <laughs> See, this is how hazing incidents yeah, start. Oh, oh, that oh, was stop nice. oh you, don't, you don't know about hazing. <laughs> you don't know about hazing. <laughs> the biggest hazer. That's not me. <laughs> Woo! That's Teach. <laughs> Flip flop battles at its finest. Yeah, he, he sucks at fighting. He always gets his ass beat by everybody. <laughs> All right, so we got time for hits. Hey, I'm next, right? Let's go. Oh, dude.
boys and girls. guys I notice I'm, I'm really immature but then when I get home and like I'm just like by myself like I have better manners uh, I worry more about other people than I do myself now so I'm not as selfish because you got to have everybody's back here you can't just think about yourself you know it's, you're gonna end up killing somebody if you go downrange so I definitely have to say that it's made me more now let's just think about uh, what you're doing right It's now. brought to my eyes more that I can't worry about myself. I gotta worry about other people too. And uh, it's not just my well-being, it's their well-being. Um, you take the little things for granted too. Cell phones, stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Cell phones, bathroom privileges, waking up privileges, sleeping privileges, all that. You totally take it into a whole different like effect when you're like, oh, look, I only get an hour of free time to myself. Like that's the only time you can think about yourself is that one exactly. hour every day. So, I mean, like I said, would I do it again? Yeah. Uh, those are the big changes I felt. I mean, other than focusing more on the objective, not the overall picture, worrying about the small things first and then dealing with the big things, I definitely sense a better leadership role too. So, I mean, I see a lot of changes, and I see a lot of changes in some of these guys too. I mean, some of them were crap when they came here, and now they they know what's going on. It's just, I think overall it's good for everybody. I think everybody should have have to go through it at least, you know, do a two year term and get out, kind of like South Korea does. But I'm not President Trump, so I can't do that. <laughs> Before I came, I was kind of more it's all about me, not about everybody else, and that was probably my hardest thing to get over was knowing that I had to have other people's backs instead of just mine. Me, I, it is what it is. As long as I have my hands, feet, legs, and arms, and I can walk and use them, I mean, I'm good. Just worry about the next guy next to you, so. 
Watch on that, amen on that, brother. I'm definitely more grateful for the small, simple things. Um, being able to choose what you eat for dinner, for breakfast, for lunch. Um, not being told what you're going to do every single moment of every single day. Like, I have so any type of freedom is really, like, value now. Um, when I do see my family, it's going to be way better than when I used to. Because realistically, I used to, like, blow up my family here and there just so I wouldn't have to be with them all the time. But, uh... Yee, where's my sister? <laughs> I do curse a lot more. Oh, yeah, you cuss a lot more. You're just around it 24-7. You feel more like, it's, it's like it's like a basic vocabulary now. Like you, you have to have at least one cuss word in each fucking sentence now. See? Party! <laughs> I'm gonna drink a lot. <laughs> we go out a lot. No strip clubs because my girl would kill me. So, you know, it's not really but uh, I don't know. I just feel like there's gonna be like a lot more freedoms. You can eat and, and do whatever you want, really. Kinda. <laughs> be a little more freedom. Oh, get the fuck out of here before I hate call. the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be more of a uh, team member than uh, somebody that's like more about himself. Because you can't really do that in the military. There's no pictures of that at all. Yeah, that's something I'm going to change. Ooh, we from basic training to basic training. Well, I think I will have a lot more freedom. And... I'm gonna try to get some nice looking bitches. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Um, not gonna lie, Dia is gonna be a beautiful blonde chick and Hit me up on Facebook if you ever see this because I'm pretty sure you're friend and you're 25. He you told me that. And this is gonna be on Diaz's Facebook, am I right? If Diaz has not told you or has not told you about me yet, I'm a fit motherfucker. Well, my, to be real, good thing this is saying between me and Halpern, yeah. edit some of this shit out. All, all of it's gonna be edited out. Most of it. <laughs> most of it. Most of it. Most of it. Most of it. Oh, no, no, no. I need her to know. She is okay, fucking beautiful. Um, you, you don't know how to edit out my shirt. I see myself being different because I, there'll be a lot more, from what I'm hearing, a lot, a lot less, uh, Basic training ish. <laughs> I don't know how to make up a word, but it won't be like basic training from what I'm hearing. Like it would be like a regular nine to five job. Then after I get off, I get the I get the ability to go do things to see here. There's no way for you to blow off steam. You just here all day, every day. You're here. There, when you get to your real duty station, you know, and since some piss you off within the platoon or at your job, you get off at like five, six o'clock. You can go hit the weights. You can go take a run. You can go jam the music. You can whatever you want to do to blow off steam, which works for me because I need to do that every day. Because whatever, whatever I've been dealing with that's been getting on my nerves, I need to get rid of that before I go to sleep so I don't wake up the next morning with that attitude I had from last night and carry it into my job again. So it'll be, it'll be a lot more chill, I figure. Well, I think it'll be a lot more chill and be a lot more, um, not total civilian-ish, but it'll give you a good mixture. Like, it's military time and then it's civilian time. Definitely. Um, I picture myself being a lot, a lot, I'm having more time naked with women. Probably a lot more beers down my neck. Um, Dip. Dip. Yeah, that'll be one. Dip. But that leads to one of my other questions. Is like, if you could go back to the civilian world to get one thing, what would it be? Dip. <laughs> Canapolis. Oh. A Canapolis flag. <laughs> What's a Canapolis flag? What does it look like? It's green with a big ass K on it. It's green with a big white K on it. Everybody visit Canapolis. <laughs> North Carolina. Alright. Well, 4012 All Tallsbury Concord Road, Kannapolis, North Carolina, 2808 motherfucking three. Be different. I mean, me just getting into law enforcement, um, it's gonna help that because one thing I learned more here is being more alert, paying attention to detail. I think it's gonna be different. For us, it's different in regard. So we get to go home and we have a better time to adjust. You know, we're not at a unit for three years. But at the same time, it's going to be a little difficult because everything's so high speed here. Everything's on the go. So when I went back home for vacation, 
you notice all this shit like why is this dude got his hand in his pockets or why is he walking that way or you hear this you notice the smallest ticking on the table tapping on the table it's like fuck all this shit you never pay attention to you pay attention to now so I'm excited to go back it might be the same it might be a little different time I don't know I might half right face some people when I get home but what is half right face and can you do any drill sergeant impressions <laughs> half right face it's a facing movement halfway to the right and following immediately following half right face normally comes from the rest position move you dickhead <laughs> As, let's see, displayed as such. One, two. One, two, three. One, two. <laughs> Too easy. Half right, face. You don't want to wear the right uniform, Private? Too easy. Half right, face. <laughs> Front lady rest position. Move. We're always fuckers or assholes, dickheads. Fuck me, right? No, fuck. And as a matter of fact, that's a bad habit that I develop. My girlfriend's gonna kill me because that's all I say. Like, alright, fuck me, right? So, calling everybody guy. Never said that before I came here. Now it's like, hey guy, hey guy. It's like, fuck me. Real sorry, likes to tell us that our girlfriend's a whore and she's fucking someone else. Um, that the whole football team's fucking her right now. She's fucking someone else, privates. Drink our fluids private. and get out. <laughs> She's, she's a whore, private. She's fucking somebody else right now. You're no, she's with right the whole football team. Right fuck me, private. No, fuck speak. you, private. Fuck no, me? No, fuck, fuck you, you private. <laughs> or if it's quiet and we're at the PT pit, just our <laughs> would like to hear that. You go. That's her head knocking out of the bed frame while she's fucking someone else. It's just simple things like that that always get us on. Just our fuck. <laughs> will tell us, hurry the fuck up. Put the shit on, dog. Put that shit on, dog. Put the shit on, dog. Put the shit on, dog. Put the shit on, dog. Is that you, Harbaugh? Every, every private loves a dress on the when she's mad or like small, anytime. Something about even, even he like smoke us. They enjoyed it. They enjoyed that smoke. I don't know why, but. I do, fuck yeah. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Cause motherfucking he smokes you. Yeah, he is a motherfucking MFC. No shit, dog. Fuck on my formation, dog. He brings a little bit more uh, personality to the to the platoon. He's actually probably my favorite one. So many Joe Sargent's, they're great what they do, but they, they all are alike in how they have to present themselves and be. And this particular Joe Sargent is breaks that and he's himself at all times and I think he relates and he bonds better with us you know uh, he calls us dogs he gets pissed while he's talking to us and then he like he has he get, it'll be calm conversation then he'll get pissed about something and then it comes calm again you it's know funny. I don't fuck around with child you fucked up knock out 20 um see what I'm like say no shit Diaz no shit no shit Diaz no shit Diaz <laughs> For me, it's uh, no shit Diaz, <laughs> fucking drill sergeants. Every time I get caught with doing something I'm not supposed to or it's mouthing off, everything's no shit Diaz. Holy Diaz. fuck balls, oh, Wayne Castor! You've got to be shitting me! All right, fuckers. <laughs> what is the origin of that noise? Same drill sergeants. Say some funny shit. Like I, I always be wondering where they get their insults from. Like when they go to drill sergeant school, and drill sergeant just throw a fucking book right here. It's all the insults. Pick your favorite. Like it's weird. They say some shit. <laughs> so sometimes instead of just doing a regular count push up, the drill sergeants like to uh, go up, down, halfway up, down. The drill sergeant. Likes to really play fuck fuck games. He goes up, halfway down, down, halfway up, halfway up, halfway down. I don't know if you get it, but it's the exact same fucking thing. <laughs> yeah.
you really can't do it. And at that point, you're just you're just sitting there like I what I don't I don't I don't fucking know what to do. So you just just lay there. And then you get yelled at for it anyway. So it doesn't fucking matter. Nothing is you don't win basic training. Finger shaping. Shape this shit with your finger. For real, we had no, we had no stencil or nothing, so we had to do it with my finger. You want a four or five D pass too? Well, now it's not going to be. It's not going to look good. Don't fit on the left and the right side of eighty second left side or down there. That's the that's the diamond with the four holes in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is the two part? Part? It'll be the two patches that I got. Well, I got all three of them on the combat patches. Yeah, Four, five, D, eighty second, and one on first. All right, so we gotta put the the thunderbolt in the. Man, you think we can fit that fucking patch right here? The fourth ID right there. Yeah. It might have to be a tad bit smaller. Yeah. Don't see why not. This is gonna be a bitch to paint though. Bitch, you're dead. Motherfucker. Why would it be hard to paint? It's fucking, it's like, all like precise and like. Finger shaping. I like it. Finger shaping, guys. That's what we're gonna fucking have to do with that shit outside. We're not actually gonna take it. Gotcha. But for his, you talking about like as far as the clothes and shit go? Yeah, you got to finger shape that shit. Like, yo, like, yo. You know, pat it, it like your dabby, like we did the yeah. stars, yeah. and then I'll just fucking come around and edge it. Okay. Make that shit, you know what I'm saying? Okay. okay. Only problem is, what color is it? <coughs> some weird ass brown or some shit like that. We got green. <laughs> we don't have no colors to make green, so don't even sit there and say it. We can do that. We got blue. <laughs> Blue and, blue, blue and red, red. Blue, and yellow. blue and yellow make green. Blue and yellow make green. Right? How the fuck do you make that tan? The tan? We'll have to make that brown color again and add white. I just want to let it be clear that every fucking color you see on here, we've either mixed, the brown we've mixed, the orange, now we got to mix green and tan. Ooh. Hey, girl, we all been doing it with three colors. You done? Red, oh, okay. yellow, blue. That's all we got. And we've been making colors out there. We're talent. Jimmy James. You got that charger? Yeah, I got that on. Thank you, sir. Don't fuck around. Hey, The only motherfucker I'm honoring here is that one right there. It's all American. That's a fucking bad motherfucker. He's like a role model. That's how I want to be. He puts his fucking heart into that shit. That's that's just hard to. He is the 82nd. That good? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's what I said. What really pisses me off, probably him too. That it looks like we just been here for years and we just painted this like a week ago. Fucking, we're spending like what? It's probably like, like 60 hours been doing this shit. Yep. I like working with James, too. I ain't never worked with another artist or nothing. So like this is new, but it's like, it's cool because we just ask each other what we think. 
And if he thinks something wrong, I fix it. If I think something wrong, he fixes it. Huh? And it goes on like that. We don't we put it like this. We don't question each other. Something's wrong. It's fucked up. We don't question each other at all. We just go. I trust gun and gun trust me. Yep. That's how it works. And a lot of motherfuckers don't have that. It doesn't usually go like that. It's just. I don't know. That's the clicks. Plus, you learn shit from, from one another. That's true, too. Like this. This type of shit. <laughs> this is James. This is a mini paintbrush. It's weird. Shoelace. Hanger. That's it. And that's it. It's weird. Some prison type shit. But you learn, though. I would have never thought of that shit. I would have been in this bitch struggling, pissed off. <laughs> I've done uh, trains. I've tagged trains. I've tagged some shit too, but nothing like this. Yeah. Nothing like you actually gotta sit back, paint it, stencil it out, and shit like that. Yeah, like, I ain't do nothing like that. Graffiti shit, yeah, shit's fun. I like doing that shit. And even then, I just fucking do like different like characters and shit. Just like a bunch of like stupid shit. I don't know. I was bored, started drawing. I had the Punisher thing, it's this gold made out. No cracks, nothing fancy. Just playing Jane. Joe Sergeant asked me to draw some more shit on it. I drew it. Had a big metal boom. And eventually it's like, alright, you gotta paint this shit now. I was like, yeah. And I'm like, halfway through, I'm just like, oh. He's like, alright, you have this, and all this, and all this. And I'm just like, fuck Joe Sergeant. We thought we were done until he came over and was like, hey, add the fourth ID patch. What? <laughs> Did you say it just right? Do more work? Slavery? Alright. Yeah, we have that bucket over there with the fat ass paintbrush. Which one? I think. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna start painting that bitch on. Uh, I'll mix it up, don't worry. She's gonna fucking get high and start fingering that shit, and then she's gonna fucking get some fucking dick. I don't think it'll spit that shit in there. Man, I'm down to get high and get some fucking pussy. I don't know when I was high, y'all were trying to fuck a bunch of fucking girls too, like... I almost got fucking bottles and shit. She's damn near like finger painting. Well, what I'm doing over here. And I was like, you fucking stone, that's why. Cockety, cockety, cockety. You just say cockety, cockety, cockety. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. My man's just said cockety cockety cockety. <laughs> he ain't said cockety cockety. Tell you one thing though, Harper. Note to self, or note to the class coming in. Keep your talents to yourself. Hey, motherfucking man. I mean, let's just for cool dude like him. But... That Italian shit is kind of fun. Oh, don't be fucking around. We fucking take the name from you if you come off crazy. That's the fucked up part. Like dead fucking on. Like that's how most of the panic comes. I'm a little bit dead. I'm a real motherfucker. If that motherfucker comes crazy, you wanna get good count? That's her fucking fault. Cause a man ain't gonna fucking say no if that shit fucking up his luck. You're absolutely right, Josard. Oh, yeah, Josard. Uh, ticket invitation. Fuck Fine. yeah. Hell fuck yeah. I don't know, I would've took this chance. Nah, fuck yeah, I would've been doing it. In the great words of young Jeezy, if she's throwing the pussy, I'm catching. I'll be like, if you give me some good fucking bone, I'll hit the shit out of you. He said I'd do you that favor. <laughs> <laughs> they impound my shit. I was fucking pissed as fuck. And this 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 broad knew that I was, I was flashing money in that club that night. Now you can roll with us. I was like, hey dog, here you go. I give him two hundred bones, two hundred dollars. Hey, grab a cap, dog. Take care, dog. I, I left all my friends there. <laughs> <laughs> fuck the family. Fuck these motherfuckers. <laughs> they ain't gonna party like us. Fuck it, let's roll. So this brought him, like, I was like, and she was like, oh, I want to see that person. Okay, let's fucking start taking shots. 
And you're not, and, 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 and this is a funny part, I told him, she said, you're gonna fucking rape me or something, let me know, but I just volunteer for you, you know what I'm saying? She just started laughing, and I was like, yeah, these are the kind of bras I wanted tonight, a day of my birthday. Because I celebrate my birthday uh, three days in a row. So if my birthday's on the 14th, I start from the 12th to 13th, and I end up on the fucking 16th. Oh, that's a couple of days. For me, that's three days. <laughs> it's looking good. It's looking good. Hey! All right, I did one of these right, which is this one. That's how thin it has to be. Randy, Randy, Randy. Oh, wow, that is a joke. Oh, no, it's not. This is actually terrible. Oh, yeah, this looks like dog shit. We're tired, man. They can't expect this. Yep. These are cross rifles, which we earned. And we get a blue disc, which represents us as infantry. Um, right now, drill sergeant in half hours and come in and check everything. And it has to be perfect. So senior drill sergeant had us do it one way, and now we got to change it. He wants us to come an inch up off the gold disc instead of your blue disc. So it's an, about an eighth of an inch further down. And then he also wants us, he's saying center it on this flat, but he has another guy set up with an eighth inch gap here. So instead of it being centered now, now it's an eighth, so it's closer. So it's, it's down more and over more. I mean, I, I think it looks looks just as good as it did, but civilians really don't know. So like this shows where everything's supposed to be and how to use the ruler. Um, here are your cross rifles. So, this is for an officer male. Now they should have an enlisted male, which is the US one, so it shows you where it needs to be. Um, as you can see, the way drill sergeant was having us do it, it's not right, but hey. You don't need to go by the book, right? <laughs> so good. Is he doing front flip? Oh no. I'll hit your head, boy. I watch this. Or bash now. How would you feel about getting deployed and being away from home? How would that affect you? Depends on what the circumstances are. Like nine months in Afghanistan. If I had to, I mean, I'd do what you gotta do. We signed up for it, but I wouldn't want to. I want to leave Amber and Cooper Jackson that long, but I do what you gotta do. My girl is proud of me. Family's proud of me. Friends are proud of me. My mom's, you know, between that and law enforcement, she's like afraid because everything's, you know, dangerous. But she's happy I'm doing this because I'm happy I'm doing this. I wasn't happy at first. Or I had questions at first. Um, you know, am I doing the right thing? You know, you fear a lot of things and you start deployment and all that goes through your head. But you're just like, fuck it, you know. I made this decision consciously. I knew what I was doing. I mean, not deployed, not deployed. Uh, I just wish that as the Army as a whole, they treat, like, I wish they would treat the soldiers like they're actually important versus just pawns in a chess game. Like, cause if you got if you got all these people fighting for you and fighting for your country, I think it's only fair that you explain to them what the fuck we're actually fighting for. Like, why are we actually over here in these people's business when they're not doing nothing to us? Like that type of shit. Like some of this shit. Like I know we're in fucking we're in Syria and all that other extra shit, Afghanistan, whatever. I I just want to know why. Like, for what? Is it because we're trying to? tell a certain country that it's wrong for them to be doing something in their own country, like it's their country. So if they, for example, fucking people in China eat dogs and cats. That's their country. That's what they do in their country. We think it's wrong, but guess what? We don't live in their country. We live in the US. So like, just like vice versa, they probably think it's shit over here that we do that's wrong. 
to them, but you don't see them trying to force their way in, trying to correct it. That's what, that's what, I, that's what I hope we're not fighting for. I hope we're not being actually bullies. Like, I want to fight for actually, for a good cause. Like, something like to go protect the city from getting killed or something like that. Like, I don't want to go be the fucking killers and be the bullies. I don't want to do that. But, I mean, <laughs> they don't, they don't specify, they don't specify on it. So, I mean, you, all you know is you're going over to kill terrorists. Just, that's just some news you gotta deal with. I mean, I'm ready to deploy. That's that's cool. I'm ready to put. I'm ready to pull the trigger if I have to. I mean, like I say, if I have to, I have to. I'm really, I'm ready to pull it. But that's just shit that goes through my head, person. Like my thoughts. Deploying blue um, deployments are good for like two big things. Means if you're about to come over here and sit next to me, you gotta be in third person about three minutes. I wasn't even gonna say anything. Or you're gonna show me your ass or your balls? No, I was just gonna stand here and watch the fucking. Because that's what's happened. That's like, I've seen two asses, one ball. One and ball? I, and I got humped. Like one nut sack or one ball? Just one singular ball. Alright. Yeah, so you see, you see the issue here? It's been a struggle. Alright, deployments. Deployments are good for like a couple. Of, see, now, now I can say I've seen three I, balls. I'm not gonna cut to that. I'm not gonna aim the camera. I'm seeing three balls now. Just pin the camera around. And one craft. Uh, deployments are good for a couple things. Um, one, it gets the soldiers the opportunity to make a shit ton of money. I've seen five balls now. Five balls in one interview. Um, I inter they're good for a couple things. One, it gives soldiers a good chance to actually go do what their job is. Um, if it's like not a real combat fucking tour. Like then it's, it's good, it's good practice, it's good training for us. Um, if it's a serious one, yeah, it's, it's, it's our job. It's just what we're here to do, that's what I signed up to do. It's time to go fucking kill people because they're doing the wrong thing. And shit I don't agree with, you got fucking people cutting off people's heads because of a religious reason, that's fucked up to me. Uh, but it gives soldiers a chance to go earn extra money because we don't get taxed when we go over there. Because, you know, we're overseas, we're literally are too busy doing shit but like, we can't focus on oh I gotta pay my, my car insurance so we don't have to worry about that extra money getting taken out it's a nice incentive for us to go across the country to a fucking shithole that's all sandy and you're fucking miserable all the time because it's 180 degrees and you're just in a shitty mood all the time because there's no one you actually know around besides your fucking your platoon, your squad your fucking company, you're just you're gonna be there, and that's gonna be like testing your mental state as well. You're gonna be in a foreign country, with no one, none of your loved ones, really just kind of doing your job, doing what you signed up to do. I mean, if it's if it's a war, yeah, that's different. You're not gonna be really thinking about that stuff. You're not gonna have time to. It's gonna be constant kind of go do this, go do that. But if we're going on just patrols, yeah, you're gonna have time to think about them. If you're just sitting at your base or just really chilling. Um, hopefully you'll be able to talk to them. Um, I'm not sure how that works. I mean, it's 2017. I'm pretty sure they've, they've got it figured out now. I'm pretty sure it's a Starbucks over in Afghanistan, so I'm not too worried about that. And there's, there's just a lot of small things that will eventually get to you. The heat, the, the food, the same shit, seeing the same stuff every day for nine months. It's just, it's one of those things that deployments can be cool, um, but they can also suck. Obviously you're gonna see your battle buddies die. Um, that's, that's something I, they don't really prep you for here. I haven't learned shit. Um, I learned how to run into bullets and clear a room one fucking way. Um, I might die. That's how I feel. Might fucking die. Army infantry leads the way. Honestly, <laughs> there was not much teaching here. I mean, I know a couple squad tactics and military formations. Uh, maybe have a little bit better discipline, but... <laughs> Only thing we learned was to push and shoot and clean. <laughs> well, what have they prepped us for here? What do you wish they fucking did prep us for? Us? What, what they prepped us here, us here, uh, prepped, uh, prepped, wow, prepped us here for was to do the most basic infantry shit: to shoot, to uh, enter rooms, to fucking raid buildings, to know what to do when you're when you're actually patrolling. Um, how to actually come together as a team with a bunch of strangers become an actual fucking team. 
which is actually one of the coolest things we've done. Um, how do you obviously shoot, how to fucking blow shit up, how to just know when, like, to actually prepare if you see an IED, what the fuck to do, how to know if it's coming, because those fucking terrorists know what the fuck they're doing somewhere too. Um, there's just a lot of basic stuff they taught us. Things I wish they would have actually taught us are like, what to do if you're walking down the street and like if you're actually in your camo, like your OCPs and you're walking down the street in like a city and someone like wants to talk to you, what do you say? How do you act to certain people? Obviously you want to act with like respect, but like they're going to ask you a bunch of questions and they're going to keep asking you. Obviously you got to be polite and you got to know, like stay in your lane like we've been told a couple times. But there's just certain things you just, they're not going to prepare you for. Like, well, how, what to do if, when your battle buddy dies? There's no real way to prepare for that, but I wish there would have been some sort of training. Just so you, because if I go over to Afghanistan and my fucking squad leader dies, that's going to take a huge fucking mental toll on me. Like, that's the guy I looked up to, that's the guy who went to my questions, that's the guy who answered all my questions. I don't really know. You're a doctor. You're a doctor. Don't know. Holy shit. But, uh, but that's just one of those things that they're not going to be able to prepare you for it. That's just such a huge thing. I just feel like people start to half ass it, like, as more time goes on, because then the more time it goes on, the more people realize the shit they're teaching us is not for realistic situations. You know what I'm saying? Like, when people start realizing that, that's when people's brains start going like, okay, why are you teaching us this? Like, I want to learn real shit. I want to learn what you really do. Like, this is here is just actually whatever. Because, I mean, even the drill sergeants will tell you, whatever you learn in basic, when you go to your unit, throw that shit out the window. So if, it's, if, it's, if, it's, if that's the case, you want us to throw that shit out the window because every unit trains different, every unit has their own method, but it's still along these lines, then why are you teaching it? Why, why, why not be more modern with it versus old school? Yeah, I feel like I learned more about like weapons. That I did, you know what I'm saying? I learned about the M4, the M240, and the M249, and the rocket launcher, and the fucking grenade launcher. Like, so yeah, I learned a little bit. I know how to use them now, put it that way. Like, I know how to use them, and I know the ranges on them and shit, but other than that, Oh, and the, the battle movements, because those are helpful too. Um, but other than that, no, I, really don't feel like, I just feel like this was, my honest opinion, camp. And I feel like it was a, I'm not going to say a Boy Scout camp, but a, uh, a summer camp. It was like a summer camp. You know, some people don't, that's just my opinion though. Like some people in here think it shit was hard, some don't. I don't want to know people that don't. Like I didn't think it was as hard as it used to be. My mom, she was a military, and when I was explaining what we doing here to her, she was like, damn, that's different than what she went through because what she went through, it was way different, you know what I'm saying? So. What are you trying to do with your military career? Are you trying to make it a career? What, what are your goals? Goals? Uh, there's like four different plans. You got your 20 year plan where I just stay in, I do this shit, possibly go officer, do that for the whole time, or I'd stay enlisted for a while, um, go from the infantry over to being a Black Hawk repairman and do that for the rest of my career. So that way I could just progress like that, maybe become a drill sergeant one day, something cool like that, um, or just not do any of that. Do this for three years, get out. That's not really what I'm gonna do. Most likely I'm gonna stay in, uh, do the green to gold program, become an officer, do that for either three or six years, then get out and then finish off my, like actually use my degree for what I want to. Yeah, I still wanna become an athletic director of like a high school. I don't know where, I'm thinking more like North Carolina. Why'd you pick North Carolina of all the states? Because it's nice. I've been to North Carolina a couple times, it's uh, warm-ish, it gets hot, but it's not too hot. I could live by the ocean, so it's got a bunch of all those perks. And it's Canapolis. Um, I don't really plan on getting out of the army, but when I do, 
It's going to be pursuing uh, criminal justice, law enforcement. Um, hopefully, maybe even SWAT someday. I'm going to go as long as nobody lets me. So, like, unless I read class, oh. I, I don't plan on doing it. Like, I'm going to try to go the whole 20 years or whatever. Because if I do 20 years, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my own. Office. It's not going to be 20 years of infantry. No, that's not going to happen. I got, I got other things in the Army that I want to try to do. Like, I want to, you know, canine trainer seems pretty cool. I like dogs. I like to train dogs. I got pits that I train. So, I mean, I, I like to do that. Or, you know, uh, human resource intelligence, 35 Mike, something of that nature. Like, I'll do six, six, seven years as infantry. And after that, I want to reclass and try to get to one of them other jobs. And then if I can get into, if I can get into the other jobs, I'll do that job for like six, seven years, and then I can reclass again and do another job. That way, within those 20 years, I can get three different jobs for a decent amount of time. And it wouldn't just be 20 years of infantry. I'll have six years of infantry, six years of dog training, six years of fucking 35 life. What kind of tips and tricks would you give to new recruits coming to basic training or just coming into the Army in general? Mm -hmm. Don't do it! <laughs> okay. I don't know. Honestly, I'd rather let them find out for themselves. You know, since school and what they got coming. <laughs> like just I'm saying, you made that sound line, man. Look, you know, hang in, do it. So. So if you have four balls and two dicks. <laughs> you got two dicks and four balls. You might be as man as me. I have written a letter to either my girlfriend, my mom, my brother, someone every day. When you're here, it's important to have an escape. There is no privacy. There is no me time. So for me, just this is probably like my eighth one I bought. Um, and I've still got one more letter to go. Um, but it's my way of escaping the reality that's going on right now. When I put myself in a letter, and it's like, for example, like when I write my girl. When I'm writing, I block everything off and I just tell her what I'm feeling or what I'm doing. And for that moment, it's almost like it's just me and her. When I write my mom, it's the same thing. Like I'm just talking to my mom. Nobody else exists. Um, and sometimes the worst part is finishing the letter. Because you got to come back and you're like, fuck, I'm still here. I got so many weeks left, so many months left. We only got two now. We only got two days left now. Definitely uh, Sunday uh, services um, uh, was a big inspiration for me. Uh, I wasn't a big religious dude, but I, I would go to church and I would listen to the father and he would he would give out some really good motivational speeches. So it would, I would be like, okay, look, he gave me a good speech and it's going to get me through this week. And then I'm going to get to see him again I can't wait to hear what he says about the next week. So just little things like that or um, letters, getting letters from your family. Um, you don't realize that because you're like, you know, it's like 2017, you use your phones all the time. Here, you don't get your phones that often. So, letters is like your, your form of way of communicating with the outside world. If you hide a brick, am I really going to rub on your jackass? Damn, that's the only thing I like. Um, oh, um, don't have cans of dip. Um, if you're going to mock the drill sergeants, I mean, kind of be quiet about that shit, dude. Because you're sick of that shit and we got fucked up for hours. Um, make good friends with other people. Don't, don't argue with other platoons about serving chow. For the ones you're fucking ass, you gotta go yeah, half portions for two and a half yeah. weeks. Still piss off about that bullshit. You remember that bullshit? Yeah, tell them because they don't. So get this you already get practically no fucking food. These dicks want to give me a half scoop of fucking mashed potatoes? Like I'm going to crawl across that goddamn child server line and whoop his motherfucking ass? I don't like doing child server because the amount of food that we give people is kind of bullshit and I feel like, I mean, like, but I want to go with a kid and starry in Africa and be like, oh, here you go, you have a tiny bit of food, good luck. Fuck no. It's fucked up. Don't get mad. And anything that happens, basic training is designed for you to fail. And they give you, I don't mean fail, like, this course is designed for you to fail every task they give you. Like, they tell you to go clean the baby in a minute, 40 seconds. It's not gonna happen. People know it's not gonna happen. So when you don't meet the time act, they're like, oh, they need the time act, get the push. 
Don't get mad. Just know realistically it wasn't meant for you to pass in the first place. The only thing you're never meant to pass is the challenges that you do as a team. When they get here, when you're here at the bank, don't expect nothing. Expect the worst. And don't get mad at nothing they do. When they come out and they drop you for no reason, when they you clean the band and be like, oh, it's still there, but you know in your head that that shit's clean, don't get mad, just push. Just push. Just breathe, push. Don't get that's it. Don't get mad. Like if you don't get mad, make it do your easy. Everything you can. If you don't get mad, just expect the worst of everything and embrace it. Embrace everything that they give you. Because don't look forward to nothing. Just come in here and be blank. Be blank. When you got expectations and you expect to do this or you expect to do that, it's gonna fuck with you when you don't do it. Example, when they, every time they tell us they give us our phone at a certain time, like we'll give it to you at 1900. It'll be like 2130 before they give it to us, and I'm probably be shitty because we didn't get it at 1930. You know what I'm saying? Like, just come in here blank and be thankful for whatever they do to you. They give you a break, be thankful. Take that break so they don't have to give it to you. I would just say, basically, if you, if you come to basic, you come in to be an infantryman. Just have an open mind. Be open minded to the fact that you're around 50 dudes with different personalities. Try to be understanding with everybody. Uh, and do the right thing. Like don't don't get your platoon fucked because you want to do the wrong. And if you see something wrong, do the right thing and tell. Like tell the senior drill sergeant, tell the drill sergeant. Because that's still You'll get fucked if you let something bad happen. Like, you, if you see something bad and you, you know it's not supposed to be done, you'll, you'll still get as fucked if you don't say nothing about it. So I, I encourage you to come in here with an open mind. Don't worry about what people call you. Don't worry about what people say about you. Come in here and be you. But don't be like the next person. Like your job is to protect your buddy, battle buddy to your left and your right. It's not to be like the person to your right, left and your right. You can always be you. I would, I would actually, I do have some tips. Um, one thing for sure is do what you're told, you know, do what you're told, uh, stay with it. Don't, don't cut the corners, you know, don't cheat. Oh, uh, when they say no contraband, that means no fucking contraband, you know, just, just do what you're told. Canapolis. And, uh, stay away from these cards like this fucker, you know, stick to yourself and, uh, Dump your girlfriend. Um, forget that you even exist. Just I want you to go outside, shit on the ground, look at it, and just put your face in it because that's what you're gonna be. That would probably be my best advice for somebody coming in. Just put your shit in a pile or put your face in a pile of shit because that's all you're gonna be. But when you get out and you get towards the end, you know you get your phone. You know it's a little more freedom. We got this motherfucker named Pizza Jim, and it looks like he would molest your child walking to school. Who is Pizza Jim and why does he come here? Pizza Jim is this dude, this weird ass old man that gives us pizzas. Steals our fucking money. Steals our fucking money. In a van. In a van. Ten dollars a fucking pizza. That pizza tastes like dog shit. It tastes like somebody pissed on it and then baked the shit in vinegar. Dude, I feel great. I gotta like finish this Oh shit. Loaded. I got like 20 minutes to finish this shit. I got 20 minutes, 40 minutes ago. I got 20 minutes. Pizza Jim's a guy, he sells pizza to us when we're good, at night. It's a piece of cake when you put your mind to it. That's all I gotta say. Fucking bullshit. Fucking A. <laughs> Fucking animals. Drink your fluids and get out. <laughs> play the game, man. No matter what they say, just, just play the game.
Alright, who wants to take a group picture? Same. I also got the boxers. Have you met my battle buddy? Boy, yo, neck looks like I'm gonna swipe a credit card down that motherfucker. Boy, you got scars on the back of your man. Yo, head, tattoo. Yo, head looks like the size of my left butt cheek. That shit's so ugly. Boy, got the punisher in a rip sign, little motherfucker head ass. Hey, shit, you ain't RIP to nobody. Boy. <laughs> Boy, you got a fold in your hand, but you ain't doing shit with it. Little head trying to act. Yeah, you a whole shit. Over with your dumb ass. Boy, you got you black on black. Little you head. Yo, you Yo, unit, yo. Hey, you. Boy, you better sit your little hippo looking motherfucker at. Little, little Steve Buffalo looking motherfucker. Little soccer looking motherfucker. Little, you play sports back. Oh, you try. Oh, you went in the road. Okay. Oh, I'm going to Oh, hell no. I'm about to kick your ass. Boy, you still hey. got the basic sideburns look, mom. Look, okay. <laughs> little dimple, but you ain't got a girl look, mom. <laughs> Boy, you got three hundred dollars watch, but can't afford no shoes and socks look, mom. Boy, <laughs> flat feet looking like a bowl. Some fucking like Earth Dollar General ass shit, bro. Shit, bro. Boy, you Look, I know that tattoo made you cry, look him up. Hey, that bitch hurt though, I'll tell you what. Oh, hell no. Look, your knees look like aliens, right 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 You don't want none of this. So I'll roast them. I'll cook your life, boy. Over easy, you want over easy or sunny side up, little head ass look him up. Man, man, get on. You talk about how you go down all these bitches, but you can barely even push up. Oh, oh, oh shit! Oh, fuck. boy, so you got little shit, boy fuck. got them shoes yeah, from Payless. Look at my fuck. What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> I'm almost going to Etsy. You I'm about to get on. What the fuck? Man, this boy ain't got a good night's sleep yet. He's like fucking six foot, fucking ten, but his fucking bed's like five foot four. I'm about to cook his leg hair. What the fuck? Got the hairiest shins. <laughs> but what is that? <laughs> what is that? Why is it what so is fucking that? pale? Bro? Boy, you gotta know that bitch you sleep. Boy, bitch, I'm like, wake. Boy, oh, get up. Hey, everybody. Right now, oh, we about to graduate, baby. What's up?